Good morning. This is Friday's devotion, so that means we are going over the scripture for Sunday. And that scripture is Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. And that is the scripture that tells of Jesus walking on water. So uh, before we do that, I'd like us to get ready for that by reading Psalm 69 verses 13 through 15, and Job 9, 7 to 8. So if you want to get your Bibles and, and uh, put a mark in those, let's, let's go ahead and start with a uh, psalm. All right, Psalm 69, 13 through 15. But as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, at an acceptable time, O oh God, in the abundance of your steadfast love, answer me in your saving faithfulness. Deliver me from sinking in the mire. Let me be delivered from my enemies and from the deep waters. Let not the flood sweep over me or the deep swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. This is the word of the Lord. All right, let's turn to Job chapter 9, and we are reading verses 7 and 8. Who commands the sun and it does not rise? Who seals up the stars? Who alone stretched out the heavens and trampled the waves of the sea? This is the word of the Lord. Now in Job, that is one of the oldest, or maybe the oldest actually, book in the Bible. And he is uh, speaking about, um, well, it's God speaking about himself. So, and I thought uh, that was appropriate. Who trampled upon the waves of the sea for what we're about to read today. So let's go ahead and open up to Matthew chapter 14, and it starts with verse 22. That is uh, right after he has fed the 5,000 people with five loaves of bread and two fish. This, this is actually one of my favorite. It has always been one of my favorite stories from the Bible. I've always been excited about it, especially the part with um, Peter and what he does. And that's always what I've focused on. But I noticed this week when I was uh, preparing for this that uh, I missed the point. So anyway, let's read it and see if you can catch the point of what I always should have focused on. And um, I found this, by the way. It is a visual that I've always used in uh, either Sunday school, if I happen to teach it, or um, children's chapel. And you see Jesus walking on the water. Here's Peter. He's starting to sink, reaching out his hand. And the main focus, it looks like here, we see Peter, his full face, but only Jesus is the side of his face. Hmm. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Here we go. Matthew 14, verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. Those are the crowds that he had just fed. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, 
Why did you doubt? And when he got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those on the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Well, in years past, I have always cherished this, and I have really focused on Peter and what he did. He had his eyes on Jesus, and he was able to walk on water. And as soon as he looked around, he took his eyes off Jesus, he looked around and became afraid because he saw the storm. So he lost faith in Jesus and what he could do. And he started to sink. So Jesus lifted him up. He saved him. And I've always focused on that part of the story, which is good, which is good. And it's a, it's a lesson for us all that he can save us, that he has control. And when we focus on him and what he can do, then we can do wondrous, amazing things. I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me, as Paul says in Philippians, I believe. Um, but the main point, I missed it. I missed it until this week. And it was Jesus commanded nature. He walked, he trampled on the waves. Just like in Job, who can trample on the waves, who walks on water. And when they were afraid, because they didn't recognize him, they didn't see him, there was a storm of ruin. Um, well, he said... Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. So in between those take heart and do not be afraid, it says, it is I. Well, that's the translation of what was in Greek, I am. Those words, I am, were the very words that God used to introduce himself, to describe himself, to name himself. To Moses, I am. And those are the very words that are sacred to those of the Jewish faith. That is his name. So when he said, take heart, I am, do not be afraid. And he's walking on water. He has said exactly who he is. And they, at the bottom of this scripture, if you read the very end, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. They saw what he could do, what he did. what he, They heard what he said, and they recognized it, said he was Son of God, and worshipped him. Now remember, in the Jewish faith and our own Christian faith, one God, there is to be one God, first commandment, and you are to worship no other God. This was the main premise of their faith. So for them to call him God and worship him was right there saying who they knew he was. At that moment, they knew he was God. Wow. I just saw that this week. Just saw it. And that should have been my main focus. But we always like to focus on, in that story, Peter and his reaction. Kind of like we focus on ourselves and our reaction to him and what we do or don't do instead of focusing on what he has done. Bam! That's big. That's big. So all through scripture, Jesus has done things and he says things that prove, that say who he is, that he is divine, that he is God, all through it. So keep that in mind because it's important. There are people out there who will argue that, oh, God, Jesus never said he was God. Ah, au contraire, mon frere. He did, all through the gospel. So... Keep that in mind and think on it today. Think on that, what it means if he was God and he came to earth and he died on the cross and rose on the third day. 
for our sins. What does that mean to you? Think about it. Let's pray about it. Heavenly Father, Ooh, we thank you. We thank you for this word. We thank you for the Holy Spirit leading us each and every day to read the scripture anew every day. We are finding new things, new things that you have put into our hearts for us to see. And I thank you for that. We thank you for your son, the divine, holy one, Jesus Christ, who came to us to live among us who died for our sins and rose on the third day. We thank you. We thank you for that because we are now able to be with you in heaven. And what a glorious day that will be. We ask that the Holy Spirit work through us today, continue to bring this story to mind all through the day, and have us think, what does that mean to us? How does that change our lives? Does it? It is in your son's holy name that we pray. Amen. Well, you think on that, and you have a good weekend, and I'll see you Sunday.